Today's show is sponsored by Profit Accumulator, the number one match betting service in the UK. Match betting is different to gambling. With gambling, you bet on one side, and if that side loses, you lose. With match betting, you bet on both sides. That means no matter what the outcome, you're a winner. When you sign up to Profit Accumulator, they will walk you through the whole process of how to do match betting, and as long as you follow what they tell you, you cannot lose. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description right now for your free trial and you can start earning some real cash. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching from. You have tuned into AFTV and you've tuned into the Stats Preview Show or the Benfica Europa League game tomorrow. James, how are you? I'm good. Quite excited for this one. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm good. Obviously, you know this, but before I woke up this morning, guys, I'd like to just be very honest about how, how we live our lives. I woke up this morning, my phone wouldn't turn on. Guys, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this. It wouldn't turn on. It would. It was on charge, but it didn't. It wasn't charging, and I couldn't get it on for the life of me. And if you guys know, that is a big problem because we need to speak with the Don and create all this and get it all up in motion. And yeah, I was sweating and stressing. So big up to James for helping me this morning and. I, I woke up to it to I woke, I, had, I hadn't heard from you. I said, I wonder if Seth was all right. And then I get his email. All an, in email. Capitals. <laughs> an email saying my phone is not working. Help me. I know. Yeah. But it's okay. We're here. We're alive. I love that you thought email. You didn't think Twitter, DM. Oh, yeah, I could have done any of that. Bro, I was panicking. Bro, like, anything. But I just grabbed my laptop and thought the first thing that I love for emails. So, uh, yeah, but we're here. We've got the stats, we've got everything for you, we've got the fun facts, we've got discussion topics today. Um, I'm going to start this off quickly with a comment that I saw this morning. Jamie Baker, thank you very much for your, your comment here. Big up James and Cecil, catch your show every night after work. It always makes my day better. Big up to oh, you, bro. Wow. Thank um, you. We appreciate that. And um, Everyone listening, we appreciate you. We've got a lot to get through today because Benfica's quite... Um, Quite a, a different opposition, obviously. It's, it's someone in Europe. It's not one of the Premier League teams, and we don't know too. Well, I don't know too. I don't know loads about them. I heard I've been doing some research on Robbie. Spoke with some Benfica fans, and I looked at some of their games. But yeah, we're going to break it down for you guys and probably give you a clearer, clearer image of what who we're facing, what we're expecting mm. tomorrow. Um, yeah, James, shall we kick it off with the fun facts? Yeah, it's always uh, our, our go-to start to the show, and I enjoy this because. Um... Look, they. I think we've learned from how many times we've done this show already, even just a few months, yeah. that these uh, these stats tell you nothing in terms of what's going to happen in the game. But they are they are interesting, and sometimes they can just remind you of just quite how well Bakaya Saka is playing, for example, or mm. you know how our numbers look in comparison to others or whatever. So let's get into it. We've got the fun facts and stats section. Let's do it. Um, here we go. Start with this one. Benfica and Arsenal met in the last 16 of the 91-92 European Cup, with Benfica winning 4-2 on aggregate, 1-1 home, 3-1 away. These are the only two meetings between the teams. So, it's already not looking good. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've only been twice. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Mad. Only, two, only two games, and yeah. Only two games, and then we got them twice. Back to back, I know it's first leg and second leg, but like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, as it was then, I mean, mm. um, yeah, we're, we're, I mean, look, I, I'm surprised we've not faced them more because this are both these are clubs who have been in Europe for years and years and years, and I, they've sort of, I feel we've kind of crossed paths with them in the sense that. They've been in the Champions League when we've been in the Champions League, and they've been in, I, I don't know, I. I'm surprised we've. I'm surprised it's only been the the two meetings before, um, yeah. considering oh, they've got real European pedigree. Um, so yeah, let's hope we can reverse that one for this. Uh, let's have a look at the next stat. Arsenal have faced five different Portuguese opponents in European competition and beaten them all. That includes Sporting, Porto, Sporting Braga, and Vitória. That was last year, um, and that was so apart from Benfica. So yeah, we beat them all apart from Benfica, and and. Well, the Benfica fans think they are the biggest team in Portugal. They believe they, that is the that is the biggest the biggest team. But I just think um, I don't know. I, I think FC Porto they're they're big to me and they're bigger. Sporting no, Sporting Braga probably aren't, but they yeah they were adamant like we are the biggest team here. So we haven't beaten them, but we can we can change that stat tomorrow. Fingers I crossed. Think 
I'm quietly confident. We've got quite a recent record against some of those sides, though. I mean, I mean, let's take let's take Benfica. I know the last time was the 91-92 ties, but we we did beat them in the Emirates Cup. Mm, that was there. <laughs> didn't Yaya Sanogo score four goals or something? That was <laughs> yeah. Um, no, big no, up no. the Emirates Cup, eh? Um, cup. They used yeah. to be like bargaining power back in like back in school. Like we were like, yeah, we won a cup. You only win the FA. I was like, nope, we won the Emirates yeah, Cup. Yeah, we won the Emirates Cup. <laughs> I remember when uh, Thierry Henry came back and won it with Red Bull, so, um, Re- New York Red Bulls. And I thought, oh wow, Jeez. everyone's winning this thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, Vittoria, obviously, we had them last season in the Europa League. Um, I believe it was one-one away. I think we beat them at home. Yeah, I think we did. Pepe's two free kicks. Mm. Um, we had Sporting Lisbon the year before, who we beat them away, but I think we might have drawn at home. Danny Welbeck winning that, and then Porto. I mean, I remember playing Porto in the Champions League. Um, yeah. I think we, we lost 2-1 away in the first leg of a Champions League knockout game, but smacked them up at home. I think Sami Nasri scored an absolute wonder goal. Um, so, our, you know, I've got quite recent memories of playing Portuguese opposition. I can't mm. quite remember playing Braga. I think we might have had them in the Europa League as well not too long ago. Yes, we play so many games. But, I don't know, hopefully we continue what's been quite an impressive recent record um, against, European, against Portuguese opposition. Mm. Let's go into the next one. Benfica have won the first leg of their last nine UEFA Europa League knockout ties when it's been at home and won 14 of their last 17 first leg matches in the knockout phase overall. Yeah, that's slightly worrying. Yeah, that's worrying. That is a little bit worrying. But do you know what? Again, we always talk about this, though. That stats don't tell you the full picture. The more that... Um, I watch more football content and we speak with a lot. I listen to the podcast stuff. A lot of people keep saying that stats don't tell the full picture. I hear it. Hey, don't don't wow. tell Robbie. It's the only reason I've got a job. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the minute, the minute stats start, the minute stats don't tell you things, I'm out the door. So. No, 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 no. no I, I agree. No I agree more. with you though. You hear this stuff and it's like, mm. it's like, come yeah. on. But, but no, James, but to be fair, we, we p- people say that it doesn't tell you the full picture, but the more we delve into stats and we, we do the research for games and we really look at numbers and stuff, we get such a clearer uh, or image of what's going to happen in the game. And it becomes very clear. Not not saying we get everything right, but we get a very calculated um, answer or an opinion of what's going to happen. And if you we've said it about it before, like a lot of things become very clear from after you've looked at the stats and, and what to expect, you know? Yeah. I, I think so too, more in kind of the analysis and the yeah. breaking down of how teams play and the numbers more than fun facts. Yes. But, fun, but that's why we're calling them fun facts now because they're just they're fun. not really stat. I mean, they are, but you know, anyway. <laughs> um, I like this one. In this season's UEFA Europa League, Arsenal Nicolas Pepe has been involved in 40, 48 open play sequences that have ended with a shot for more than anyone else. <laughs> He's definitely, definitely played his part in the Europa League. 100%. 100 Someone who potentially could, should, well, a lot of fans I'm sure will be saying should be starting tomorrow. I spoke to many fans actually, and they they think he should be starting, deserves to start, um, especially for being dropped in the... In, being dropped for the last Premier League game, he should be definitely having involvement um, tomorrow. And I believe, I believe he will. I believe he will. I, I, I believe he will. I believe Pepe will. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll definitely go into that a little bit. Yeah, there's, a, there's certain things I'd like Pepe to play. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll go into it in a bit. It's a good, okay. it's a good discussion. So stay tuned, guys. We'll, we'll chat about starting elevens and all that in a bit. Uh, let's go with our last fun fact. Yeah, Benfica's uh, Pizzi has been directly involved in more UEFA Europa League goals than any other player this season. Six goals and two assists. There's your danger man, Cecil. Thank you very much. I'll be, I'll be focusing on that, guys. Make sure you check no, out. The- no, I mean, it, it could be... Uh, no, I've got, yeah, Benfica, they produce so many talented players. Mm. Um, Jao Felix, who, or Felix, or however you pronounce it, he, who went to Atletico Madrid. What a supreme talent. Yeah, and great, and great, yeah. They produce flair players. They produce real quality. Just they're exciting to watch. Yeah. Benfica, you don't the thing. The thing about Benfica, I don't watch a lot of Portuguese football, but 
they've progressed far in Europa League competitions before. I think they got to the final loss to Chelsea and they've always been a good side. I think they knocked out Spurs a couple of years back um, because kind of no matter who they've got, they've got an identity and they play really great football. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be tricky. Um, absolutely. So we'll have a little look at, yeah, their flair player and all that. Yeah. Mm. Um, got any comments coming in? We've got quite a few, James. I'm just people saying about the conf people saying about us being confident, right? Um, will it be a three nil win? Just remember that that day. And then here we got from Avinish saying, as oh, sorry, no worries. As an as an Arsenal fan, I want to get too cocky about winning the match because some of us were like this Arsenal versus Wolves and we lost. So I don't know. Now I don't um, think I'm not I'm not conf I I'm not overly confident. I don't know what are, are you. you not? Do no, you know I think I think on the we recorded forever Arsenal and um I think I said one one in the first yes. leg. Oh uh, do you know what I did I did I did hear you say that. Yeah. yeah. Um I'm quite I'm do you know what I wasn't as confident until I heard the, um Robbie speak with their fans and the way they play and how they're yes, they're they're sitting in fourth, um, but they say they're not having a great season, which I found very interesting. They said that it's 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 a bit up and down. They're not playing great football, but they are they are sitting in fourth. But um, yeah. they are they are yeah. having they are having a mixed season. I think mm. they, well, I mean mixed, right? I mean they're still in contention of finishing the top three. They're currently fourth, um, but um, you know, they were in the Europa the Champions League qualifying round. They were knocked out by um, oh, do you know what? I can never pronounce this team's name. I'm really sorry. Uh, you know, P A O K F C. The, the um. Well, either Greek side. Yeah. I, I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how you. Yeah, say it. Out, because I don't know how to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think P-O-K sounds. Okay, so, so I'd rather call it. Well, that. it's how it spells. So it kind of looks quite good. If actually anyone knows how to pronounce it properly, do, do send it over. But they were knocked out by them, which would have been a disappointment in the um, Champions League. So they didn't get to the Champions League group stage. Therefore, they drop into the Europa League. Um, mm. And actually, this is probably a good time to chat about sort of Benfica's numbers, Benfica's form, because. The main angle I've been looking at here is both legs are away. And I know that one of them will be allocated as the home. So this one coming up on Thursday or tomorrow um, is the away leg for us. It's in home. It's going to be Benfica's home tie. So mm -hmm. that will play into kind of the psychology of the game a little bit because we've got to... But we need to get a away goal. Otherwise, we're kind of walking on thin ice the whole time in, at Olympiacos when, when we're playing our home game. So I wanted to look at the away numbers and how both teams have fared on the road. It's fair to say that Benfica have done OK and actually are probably doing a little bit better than us, which is surprising because I thought we were doing OK ourselves. Uh, but if I just look into it now here, Benfica are away in the Europa League. So they won 4-2 at Lech Poznan. They drew 2-2 two, two at Rangers. They drew 2-2 two, two at Standard Liège. What I would say about those is you'd be... Exp Rangers are a good side this year. They, they've they improved a lot under Steven Gerrard, but you'd be yeah, we expect to be backing Benfica to win yeah, that um, and to be beating Standard Liège. You know, they've scored eight goals, but they've conceded six. I don't really know what I take from that. Arsenal won all three games away from home, but you could probably say we probably had a slightly easier group, maybe. Uh, um yeah. It was hard, you know, Molder, it's... Rapid Vienna. Oh, uh, yeah. Hard, hard, no. And obviously, they, they collected five points on the road, so they did quite well. If we look at them away in the league, in the 2021 season, Benfica's league away record stands at nine games played with four wins, three draws, two defeats. They scored 15 goals and conceded nine. And I know you can't really compare leagues, but if you compare Arsenal's, Despite winning all three away ties in the Europa League, Arsenal's away form over the league season has produced a record of 12 games played with five wins, a draw and six defeats on the road. So losing half of them with 15 goals scored and 12 conceded. So we are at least in a positive goal difference. Mm. You know, I've thrown a lot at you there, guys. And it's quite hard to really because you can't really compare the leagues too well um i'm not so sure where they rank in terms of standard to one another um but they i'm seeing kind of mixed numbers from them there almost like they're good side but they're vulnerable 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then would I don't know? Is that the same? Is that the same for us? I don't think right now that is. If I'm completely honest, I think yes. I don't think we're vulnerable. I think we're kind of on the up now. We're on form. Um, listening to the Benfica fans as well, they they're quite worried. Obviously, with Bamia coming off a hat trick, he's going to be fired up. Like, there's, I there's, think we are vulnerable. Do you? Yeah, I think when I saw what happened against Wolves and Villa, yeah, it made me realise we have improved since the since Boxing Day. We are on the up under Arteta. Things are moving in the right direction, but mm. we still had a week like we did at the Midlands where it just all crumbled. Mm. Where we were even playing really well for forty five minutes of the one hundred eighty minutes of football we played there. The first 45 minutes, we were great. And then we crumbled. And even at 1-1, you know, I think where Arsenal didn't get much criticism is that Wolves were pretty toothless in that game. And I know they drilled it in, you know, Jao Moutinho scores from, a well, Portuguese player, Jao Moutinho drills one in from, you know, 25, 30 yards or whatever. But it was still 1-1. We were still in the yeah. game. And actually, we capitulated with what happened with Leno even with 10 men, we never really had scoring and you'd think we'd maybe do something. So yeah, I think, I, yeah, when, when, when we went, when we went down, James, and the, if, after the first yeah. round, I think, yeah, we, we just, yeah, we kind of just, it's so that's, like, not, that's not okay. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You are right there. Um, you know, it's a weird one. And then you look at Villa, if we go a goal down early, we can do anything. Mm. You know, what, what if we make a poor start against Benfica and they think, well, we've done our research on Arsenal. They can't break low blocks. Let's just sit back. You know, that's uh, they'd be foolish to do that over two legs, over 180 minutes of football. But yeah. do you get what I'm saying? I do think there's vulnerabilities in us still. And and I think, you know, I wish I could take credit for this being my point, but it wasn't. I, I think it was either it was one of Mo Turkish or Lee made a great point of the podcast. You know, they said there's probably a bunch of Benfica fans podcasting saying, oh, no, we're playing Arsenal. Oh, but if you look at their season, they're actually not doing very well. A bit like we're saying about them. Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be a really fascinating tie. Two mm. kind of sleeping giants, if you know what I mean. Do you think it'll be, just before we, I pick up the Super Chat, do you think it'll be an open game or do you think that both teams are going to go a bit apprehensive and, or do you think they're going to go for it? From what I hear about Benfica is they, they, they get in your face, they play a higher line, they, they press. So I don't know if they'll change... Their style of play. I, think look at, it, look at. I think it'll be cagey at first. I think it'll be cagey at first because there's two legs. There's always, there's a second game to come. Mm. I don't think they'll want to concede at, at, at home and, and give us that away goal. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's gonna I think it'll be cagey at first and it'll open up as the players, something will happen, which will open the game up, and the players will realise there's another there's another game. Yeah. So let Arsenal think, let's try getting an away goal and, and give ourselves a, some sort of command here. Because they'll remember what happened to Olympiacos. We had the away goal last season. Mm. But Olympiacos got two. Yeah. And, you know, that, that can happen. Um, smile, please. Uh, like, that, <laughs> like that name. It says, I'm confident our attacking players are, are all firing now, of apart from agent, <laughs> apart from agent Willie, um, okay, yeah, I, 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 so I, I, so I kind of feel once we um today and when we look over everything, James, we get in the studio tomorrow. I normally solidify how how I feel, but right now I'm I'm quietly confident. I'm not doing the yeah, we're gonna win. This is it, free. It. I'm I'm not on that. I'm definitely not on that one yet. We need to. I need to really take away of what's going on. Um, and the two legs, the two legs, both being really away, um, that will play a will play a factor as well in it. Hundred percent. It'll be it'll be um, it'll be a big deterrent factor of how I think we're gonna if we're gonna win or lose in the game. But yeah, yeah. It, right. it, you know, it's funny, right? Because we're no experts on Benfica. We're gonna do our research and have things prepped for mm -hmm. the build up show tomorrow. And we're trying to bring you just some stats and just an idea for how they work. Uh, but we also want to preview the Arsenal side of things, which we're going to do. And, you know, one of the things was that Leeds game. We we win 4-2. We've played brilliantly. Yeah. We played brilliantly for the first half against Wolves. And all right, we'll allow the second half against Wolves. We had 10 men, fine. They're they're yeah. they're a good side in the end. Um, but Villa, we were just missing. 
we had so good approach play, but we were toothless. And it's like, I don't know what Arsenal going to get. I don't know. And go on. Yeah. Well, I was going to say be- better than better than getting an Arsenal where you knew we were going to go out, play three at the back with a hybrid left wing back who comes into midfield and we were going to be really boring. It's better than that. Don't get me wrong. I, I prefer going in thinking, oh, we might be good today <laughs> rather than thinking we're going to be, you know, crap as always. But well, this is it. This is it, James. Like um, speaking again, speak when we speak with fans and, that, and they were just saying, why would you um, change a, a formula that's working? Like if it's not broken, don't don't change it. Like, yeah, if it works, that's what they said. They said, keep it. Don't change the team from Leeds. But then I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I don't want to go through it right now. Um, who stays in, who, who swaps out. But like players... I believe probably was spoken to in the week and been saying, "Listen, I need you. We need you for Thursday, so please just take, understand that we need you to be um, be starting on Thursday. So this is why you're gonna have to take this time out. But if it's broke, don't fix it. Is that is that the way forward? We won four two, and we looked like we were convinced in the whole game. In my opinion, yes, we lapsed two goals, but I don't know. Yeah, Let's... I get it. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I I I, I get that, but. How broken was it before? You know, it, 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 what what went wrong against Villa in terms of the eleven and stuff was also what was going really right in the games before. Mm. So it's a tricky one. Let, 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 let's delve into it while, while yeah. we're here. And guys, send in your send in sort of what your what you'd like to see. I'm going to start with the eleven versus Leeds we saw, um, which I got there. I've also got a little list of the others to play, which is basically who else is realistically in contention. So, I mean, we'll go through them all. Uh, that was the 11. Yeah. I guess, got... I guess the question to ask you, Cecil, is of that list below, who, who, who do you think has got a, a good claim for starting? against? There's Memphis. one guy missing. <laughs> you what? There's one guy missing who I would want on others to play. Oh, God, who? That is Flo Balogun. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, stop no, it. He's ava- Listen, everyone obviously listen. He's available. He's available in the Europa League squad. I know, I know. Look at James's face. He's, I can't not go to these shows, these stats preview shows, without mentioning Balogun. Uh, listen, don't get me wrong. He's not going to start. I'm aware, right? Aubameyang's on a hat-trick. He's, he's flying right now, yeah? But he's probably going to get priority there. Lacazette, in my opinion... Doesn't really deserve to not to be dropped. He's also playing really, he's been playing really well. Um, scoring goals for us as well in the time that we need him. But <laughs> it's be stupid. I know Jesse will be like, why would we bring free strike? It'd be stupid. And you might have a point. But you know, I just want to see Balogun involved um in the team more. Uh so yeah, I would have liked to see him and others to play. But it's okay, I'll forgive you for that one. <laughs> You've done your little Balogun push. Can we can we All right, let's go back to the it now? Yeah, let's get serious. You, this. you, and your honestly, one day you'll come to me. You'll be like, "Oh, John Smith, who? Oh, kid from the reserves. He's twelve, but he's a proper baller." Yeah, he's I'll ready. He's ready. Bring him in. He yeah, you will. You'll... I've not watched any of the reserve games, but I'm telling you, he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, cool. Let's let's get serious. But uh, let's get serious for this. So, right. So Leno, uh, Leno, and right. I mean, Leno's probably going to start. If I'm completely honest, but I, I see a lot of people in the comments saying Ryan, there, there's a there's a there's a claim for Ryan to be to be involved. James, what's your R- Ryan was fine against Villa. In fact, he was quite good actually. Um, he was. He, he's more than capable of playing at this level and being fine. I just wouldn't risk it because there's so much riding on the on the Europa. If we were, I know we are within six points of top four, but there's so many teams above us that have game in, games in hand. Um, and and we know we're not going to get top four, and we're very likely not going to get top six. If um, if we were sitting fourth, like Chelsea are now, or we were hanging around in the top, you know, in and around the top four, and we had a genuine shout for it, I'd say play Ryan, play Ryan, rest Leno. There's a lot of big games to come, but this is this is, in my opinion, the priority now. So. Yeah, I'd stick with I'd stick with Burton personally. Yeah, okay, I would as well. I was just having like I was playing a little bit in my mind right there of like, would you play Leno for the first leg? Maybe Ryan for the second leg if you're in front. Would you play right? But that has never happened. That would never happen. Like putting Ryan in first, maybe and put Leno in second. I think just for safety and and security, yeah, I think Leno's going to be the one to start in goal and and rightly so, if I'm honest. Um, but it does it does happen if. 
it does happen if we win this leg 3 0 or something. And yeah. I'm, I'm, for anyone who's going to come at me saying, you're too confident, I'm, I'm not saying we will. I've predicted a 1 1. But, you know, Arsenal are also good enough to go and win 3 0. And I think if you do that, then I would bring Ryan in, maybe. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It is an interesting one. I would, um, yeah, I'd stick with Leno. But you're you're right. If we go three nil, if we go three nil um, up in the first half, I still I know this not first half, first leg. I know when, this is again. I don't expect it to be that. But if that happens, I still think bringing Ryan in. I think if we lost the game, James, off in the second leg, yeah, people, yeah I know what you mean. It would be calamitous. Wouldn't it'll it? be at, yeah, and there'll be questions asked everywhere. But anyway, let's move on to the centre back pairing because I see a lot of people in the comments arguing about this as well. Um, I, mm. I see that, like, this is what I'm saying. People are saying, I think Mari holding partnership should take place. Like, people are definitely saying holding and holding should be back involved. But again, Gabriel and Louise, for me, strongest pairing in it for centre back pairing, in my opinion. I think they have to start. And do you know what, do you know what it is as well? When it comes to aggression, I know Benfica are quite an aggressive team and they will get in your face and they will try and rile you up. And that that, that is a style of play that they go for as well. Um, I think Louise and Gabriel are the ones to handle that and be and be tenacious back and aggressive. And people may say, well, Louise might lose his head and blah, blah, and he's, he can be calam calamitous. But no, Louise and Gabriel for me all day. I see Holden and Mari is a popular one at the moment as well. But yeah, James, your thoughts? Uh, they're my favourite pairing. I've had to staunchly defend David Louise of late. Um, and, you know, because he's not without his errors, he's not perfect. He's not the future of this club. I take all that. But, you know, let's put some respect on a guy who's won all the trophies he's won, who's given us massive performances in cup finals and who, well, a cup final and a cup semi-final and three trips to Wembley. You know, and also, let's be real, he's he's the best passer out the back. He absolutely is. And that is a big part of the way we play. Yeah, he's a big, you know, if they are this high-pressing, aggressive team, which we're hearing that, you know, they which I, I, you know, I'm going to do my research and, and be as clued up as I can be or Benfica, but don't watch Portuguese football as regularly as I'd like, perhaps. And if they are this really high intensity team, we need press resistant players. Mm -hmm. That is players who, when they're pressed, they can beat it. You know, they can get past a man. They can release the ball quickly. They can move very quickly. Yep. And Louise and Gabriel are probably the best at that. Louise because of his ability on the ball. And there's a good shout for Mary there as well. Um, Gabriel, because he's strong and fast. I think Holding, who's had a good season, is the least press resistant. Yeah. So I st I stick with that personally. So we know I, how ready Mari is. He's not played for a good month. That's, I was just about to say that. I was just about to say people that are screaming for Mari need to or Mari, however you say it, however you want to say it. You got to realize that he's, in my opinion, not he's still not match fit, and it's shown when he came back in. Like he's not he's not full fully match fit. So when it comes to a high pressing team. You're you're more likely to be caught out from that when you're not when you're yeah. not. So um again, Louise and Gabriel, definitely the pairing for me. The net of people now, what here's the argument now, James. Mm. Does Tierney, if he's fit, come back in? I have no idea. I need to sleep on this one a little bit. Yeah, more. this is such a tricky one. And I know people are gonna say, Of course he does, and come on, it's Tierney, of course he does. He, we don't we look we're so different without him. I do you know what? I understand that, and I'm with you. Trust me. I want my favourite uh, fullbacks together would be Cedric and, and Tierney as soon as he's fit. However, we need to be we need to realise he's come back from injury. Um, we've got two legs, and Bellerin is it. It doesn't pain me to say, but he had a, he did have a good game against Leeds. So he was I, good. I think, he was good. Yeah, so I think I think he does hold up. People are saying, of course, Tierney. I, I, like James said, I think it's one we need to sleep on and. <sighs> There might be bigger games in which we are in worse form and so Tierney becomes more crucial. Yeah. Right? You know, we the Midlands results were poor, but, like, overall, Arsenal have been in decent form since the 26th since, uh, of December, since Smith Rowe came in. Mm. And Benfica and Cedric's been playing quite well and Bellerin just had a good game against Leeds. We might, I don't, what if Tierney, what if Tierney just gets another injury? Uh, literally, I know you could say that about anyone. I know, but he's been particularly er uh, injury prone mm. since he's joined the club. And it's small factors, but traveling away, doing all the traveling, playing in a team that's going to be aggressive, and act, like 
I wouldn't for the first definitely for the first leg. I wouldn't potentially want to risk Kieran Tierney. I think I'm probably going to say I would. I would start. As, it does pay me to say a little bit. I would start Bellerin, um, especially for the first leg. I'm, I will sleep on it, but that is where my head's at right now. Um, but then, if we, as I said, if we need press resistant players, then you're probably going to want a Tierney over a Bellerin, who's just more secure with the ball. Yeah, you're right. Although Tierney gives it away a lot, so there's that in the possession stats. Anyway, um, oh, we, yeah, we, yeah, we need to. We, we spent a long time on just literally the, the back four and the goalie. I don't know if you wanted to. We can. Well, well, because right, because this is a good problem, right? I know we spent a long time on it, but do you know what? Fair enough, because these are the problems Arteta's got to deal with. And if Correct. I just fly through the rest, I mean, we've got Pepe, Martinelli, and Lacazette, who, you know what? A couple of weeks ago, all deserved their place in the team. That was a starting three against Man United. That was yeah. the starting three against Man United, right? Um, and I felt they all, they all played well and they all had their bit to play. Even Willian came on and played well in that game. Um, I think we're all pretty sure Willian won't start in this, so I've not included him in there. Um, what I don't want to see from Mikel Arteta is this. I'm just going to bring it up now. I don't want to see what? Aubameyang on the left and Lacazette up front. Whoa. Yeah, not a fan of that, that. That yeah, no, no. And the reason, the reason I don't want to see this, and forget, forget the back six, seven, forget all that. I'm, I'm focusing on the front four here. The reason I don't want to see that is because I think that would be a cop out. Because what we've seen is recently is Lacazette do a really good job for the team up front in terms of work rate, hold up, all that. We've then seen a Bamiang come in and score two goals for new against Newcastle. Yep, from the left, fair enough, with Lacazette up front, but then score a hat-trick against Leeds as the sole striker. And in the absence of Aubameyang on the left, we've seen Martinelli step in and do really well against Chelsea, Brighton, um, I think one of the cup games as well. We've seen Pepe come in on the left and do well. And now, now we've seen uh, Smith-Rowe shifted to the left for Odegaard to come in and do a really good job as well. Mm. And these are players who are safer with the ball, who when they get it, they're creators as well as final third players in terms of the numbers and, and, and you know, and, and getting assists and goals. So I just think if he did this, it would tell me that he's not really sure who to leave out. And he fancies Lacazette as his striker more in terms of his all round ability, in terms of, you know, his hold up play and what he does for the team. But he feels he can't drop a Bamiang. That's you know what, what that would tell me. James, that is, that, I think what James is saying there, guys, is very well spoken. Great points as well. And I, I actually I fully agree with you, James. I don't want to see both of them playing. A lot of people are saying, what about them both up top? I don't know what you guys mean. Do you mean in the two up top? Or do you mean like this, how James got up here? But I, I think it's counterproductive having both of them playing like this. I don't think we play our best football when it's like this. Um, I, I actually think Smith Rowe has to, Take the bench for tomorrow's game, and I don't think that's. I think that's fair. I think he's really, yeah, yeah. Should all the guards should play? I agree. I actually agree. I think wow. Smith Rowe should take the bench only because he's had a lot of minutes. And yeah, no, I, I, I really do. I think that will, that will work better for us. I'll look into it as well for Bamiang. I think Bamiang should be starting up top. Like I said, they play a high line. We're going to break it down definitely tomorrow. But the best person to you um, to yeah utilize people playing a high line is a Bamiang. He identifies that weakness so well and does the in-behind runs. And, and that is a really, but that's a really good point, mate, right? Because there's an argument here that you have a Lacazette who drops into midfield and is part of the build-up play, and Saka can be that. And then you have a Bamiang and Saka again beyond. Look, I, I'm maybe exaggerating. If I see that, I won't be, obviously I won't be distraught. But I think it would tell me that Arteta is not exactly picking... The, the best team the fully team. on what he thinks is the best balance and the yeah. players in form. Yeah, you know? he's, he's doing that nicey nicey thing of I don't want to drop players. I, I, feel, I feel he does that all the he does it all the time. I feel bad or what, that's what I don't, well, that's what I get from it anyway. Hundred percent, James. And like I said, just quickly, to play this is counterproductive. Um, I want Odegaard to start in the ten. If Lacazette starts up top, yes, he holds up the ball well, but he drops into midfield, and I think Odegaard that closes down his space where he plays best in. And uh, that's what I don't yeah. want to do. like. They might get I know away. What you mean. They can get too congested, can't it? Exactly. And you want to use a Bamiang. You want that space for a Bamiang to be going in behind, creating space for Odegaard to pick up the ball and put it in behind. Um, yeah, it's true. It, 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 yeah, you, you, you make a good point there. I would personally start Smith Rowe over Odegaard. Just because Odegaard hasn't, he's done well, by the way, he has done well in, in the Villa game and the last, I, I don't think he's set the world alight, but I think he's done well and 
you can see that with time, it will grow into a little bit more. What I like about this 11 against Leeds is that with Aubameyang playing on the shoulder and Smith Rowe coming inside, which we mentioned on our stats review show, he is getting a lot of touches centrally. So he's actually helping Odegaard occupy those spaces where Lacazette was. But Aubameyang stretching the back four, so you're constantly asking questions of them. What yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing in terms of a balanced alternative Pepe. is this. Yeah. Okay, Pepe yeah. comes in on the left. So at least you've got players who are safe for the ball, but you've got direct runs of Pepe and Saka. And then Lacazette can come in. But there's just a more natural balance. I feel like I feel like you just lack creativity and you lack security with the ball if you've got both Lacazette and Aubameyang who, look, uh, okay, may, look, maybe I'm exaggerating. If you, Lacazette can drop in and be part of the, the, the creative kind of you know, engine of the team and Aubameyang can be the, or is the direct runner. So I get that. You know, what's the real difference? I suppose what I'm trying to say is Lacazette and Aubameyang have had in the last month and a half or two months nearly have had good moments and, you know, the hat-trick for Aubameyang, Lacazette scoring a couple of goals, a few decent performances. But actually, I think Pepe has been the most form player of the two, of yeah. the three of them. So is, is this is this the 11 you would go with? Is this what you're saying? No, it's not the 11 I'd go with. I'm just talking about a balance I'd be happy to see. I think this was the starting front four against Villa. So, and to be honest, we were pretty toothless in that. Mm. God, I mean, this just goes to show how difficult it is it for is, is. Mikel Arteta. It just does. Thought, because... Sorry, just quickly. I would have swapped out Smith Rowe and uh, uh, Bamiang for Lacazette. That's the only change I'd have made. But um, that you're right. It's going to be. It's difficult to decide, James. I, I wouldn't want to be Arteta right now. There's some decisions, some tough decisions he's going to have to make for tomorrow's game. And you know, we mentioned the word press resistant. Lacazette is in terms of hold-up play, but Bamiang's that ball over the top. And I, and I know they've got Otamendi and Vertonghen in their ra ranks, and I don't know if they're playing week in, week out. Again, we're going to look into that, but mm -hmm. slow, ageing centre-backs. Even at their prime, they were never the quickest. I mean, Vertonghen yeah. wasn't slow by any means. He was very good for Spurs, and Otamendi as well was a league winner. But they'll have experience, but I want to... I want to almost throw the youth and exuberance on them. I want to throw our energy on them. You know what I mean? Smith Rose, like quite a powerful runner. Saka and Pepe, ball carriers. Do you know what I mean? I want to ask yeah. questions of them, like we did of the Leeds back four. Yeah, we have to ask. We have to go out, go out them fast. And you're right. That is definitely the the thing that we need to do is ask questions of them and their defense. Because I think at times, looking at those players, Otto Mendy can be shaky, especially on the ball. Yeah, he's tenacious and he, he has experience, but I, I don't think he's an amazing ball player. But Tongan, he reads the game well. Um, also, again, aggressive. But I think Aubameyang's the one to be off the shoulder and, and will expose them. I really do. Lacazette will be able to hold up the ball. You are right. Um, and bring and play. But I, I, I love Lacazette and I don't want him to... If he does get dropped um, for Aubameyang, I hope he doesn't... He doesn't uh, regress in, 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 his, in his performances because of it. Because he's been... Mm vital for us with this season um, I know what you mean when he's scoring you feel you just got to keep him in but yeah it's, it's, we'll su see. it's such a difficult one but it's a it's a problem that I'd, it's a good problem to have it really is yes yeah, really it is right guys just before we end the show um yeah. gotta obviously plug AFTV VIP yeah. guys for anyone who doesn't know for 2.99 a month you get access to ad free content everything you see on YouTube and you're thinking oh the ads <sighs> popping up. Ad this? yeah yeah, fine. You get none of that on AFTV VIP. And we're going to show you exactly what it is we're looking at here. This is an app. You download it by uh, typing AFTV VIP on Google or AFTV.mobi. You save it to your home screen and it saves as an app, functions as an app. It It's an app. It's great stuff. And you, what you get is all the YouTube content you normally have um, with AFTV VIP, £3 or £2.99 a month. You get things like the bias predictor, read articles. This one's by Fabio Duarte. Five players with something to prove in the second half of the season. Who Name me one player you think's got something to prove in the second half of this season, Cecil. <laughs> Willian. <laughs> Fair enough. No, I'll, yeah, Willian. There's, there, that's one. There's there's quite a few, if I'm honest. I still think yeah. Pepe. still think Pepe holding. But um, yeah, Willian's got... Willian's got uh, at more than a second half of the season to prove, bro. He's got easy. I need. I need a good. I need a yeah. half the rest of the season, the next season. But yeah, do you know? You know, I'm, I'm going to go for a, for a. I mean, William's the obvious one, right? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go with something a bit more out there. I want to go with Danny Ceballos. Now, I 
I rate him massively. I really think yeah. there's there's more in him as a player than we've seen. Um, but you know, this the end of the season will be the end of his second loan. He'll have done two years at the club, so he's pretty. You know, he, he'll have been there a while. Um, Real Madrid are desperate to sell and are looking to sell players and move players on. Um, you know, it, that will be kind of make or break. Do we pick him up for 10, 15 million? I saw I saw a, a report that he's available for 25 million. I don't know if I want the club to spend quite that much on him. Um, so that will be quite interesting. But yeah, go check that out. You've got articles and stories. I even write a few myself all popping up. So definitely go check that out. Uh, what have we got here? We've got Robbie's uh, preview. Oh, let's just get rid of this banner for a second. Um, Robbie's preview where he gets the low down on Arsenal's um, Europa League opponents, Benfica, as we've just been chatting about there. Go watch that video. Obviously, that is on YouTube, but it comes out first uh, without ads here as well. Um, what else have we got to show you? Hey, sorry, James, that was a great question, though. Who's in the second half of the season? Who's got... Someone yeah, said about yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah. the babble. That is, that is that's very true. Great. This okay. Carry on, James. Sorry, the app is just a wicked place. Carry on. No, it is, and you got the match center. Anything you want in terms of, you know, your stats, everything we look at when we are evaluating how Arsenal are playing from a numbers perspective, you get that on the match center. You can do your AFTV picks, and guys, there's loads of content on here as well that you don't have to be subscribed for. So go check it out. Like you're starting eleven. Uh, the poll, AFTV picks, you can go obviously take on Robbie, that, you know, win a potential share of a £1,000. There's so much going on in the app. Uh, Cecil, tell them very quickly about How's Your Touch, which is your touch. Your show, oh, your baby. My baby, my, like I said, like I always say, it's where I'm being me, myself, back to the old days, throwing it back, playing football, um, doing football challenges against influencers and fans and taking on me, who I believe I'm the best footballer around at the moment. Um, it's been a while, <laughs> but I challenged them to football competitions. There's crossbar challenge. I challenged the Don's crossbar challenge, who he beat Thierry Henry in, if you didn't know. Um, challenge him to that. There's shooting challenges, dribbling challenges, speed challenges. Um, how's your touch is what the show's called. I test people's touch. It's, 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 it's fun. It's a lot of banter. We're not, James, when, James has been on it as well. Yeah, how um, did I do, Cecil? Yeah, you did all right. Just did all right. How, um, how does, how is no, the, no, how's we're the moving on. Going? So basically, the AFT... How's the... I thought you were a striker. Do you know what, right? Um, there's been there's been some 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 crazy some crazy times, but um I lost recently. I'm gonna be honest, from hands up, I lost to um a really good female footballer on the last episode. She done really well, and I played against Kalechi, who by the way, if you guys didn't know, not the not the greatest footballer. <laughs> I don't know if you can you gauge that, but that's a little insider. But I, I was just watched like, that episode actually. Yeah, I was the touch it's on AFTV VIP. Um, really, really good, really good app service. Um, and I was gonna say, like you said, it's 299 75p a week. It's pennies, it's 75p a week, guys. That's all it is. Um, yeah. and it, it has comes yeah. with so many yeah, all that content, yeah. YouTube that's, that's, content and... ad free comes out first, exactly that. Um, exclusive yeah. shows, more to come. It's, it's the place exactly. To be. It's the place to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are coming to the we're coming to the end of the show now. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And before we go, I just want to say, make sure you check out Profit Accumulator and please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This we never say that. We never say that. Yeah, we, we, we don't. We don't. I feel I, I, I kind of don't ever want to like beg for it, but yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. likes and comments they do help. And actually, yeah. you know. I know the advice is always don't get too like caught up in comments and stuff, but we do read them. We do genuinely take in feedback. The best one, someone once told me that I nod too much. So when Robbie's speaking, I'm there going, <laughs> I no, now I'm trying not to do that as much. I because know. Robbie. So the I, I look from, up yeah. a lot, think, and I, I smile a lot and stuff, but that's, we're improving. So, but please, <laughs> we're, we're, that's how it goes. Please like this video. We want to do a like target. I want to do a like target. Never done that. Let's go with, I don't know what we normally get, but 2,000. 2,000 likes would be cool. Um, yeah. And turn on the notification bell. Thank you. for Oh, for goodness sake. We don't <laughs> want to end on this. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Today's show is sponsored by Profit Accumulator, the number one match betting service in the UK. Match betting is different to gambling. With gambling, you bet on one side, and if that side loses, you lose. With match betting, you bet on both sides. That means no matter what the outcome, 
you're a winner. When you sign up to Profit Accumulator, they will walk you through the whole process of how to do match betting. And as long as you follow what they tell you, you cannot lose. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description right now for your free trial and you can start earning some real cash.